Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to my studio in Brooklyn. Uh, for any of you who are here through Michaels who don't know who I am already, I am an artist and author, and I live in Brooklyn, New York, and I, I'm mostly known for my daily sketchbooks. And I wrote a book called Draw Your Day and a book called Draw Your World that's a little bit more, Draw Your Day is all about keeping an illustrated journal and draw your world just goes into a little bit more depth about drawing and drawing being inspired by the world around you. And today I'm excited to play a little bit with metallic paints. Um, something that I do from time to time, most of my work, because I, I do some commercial work and a lot of my work is scanned, um, the metallic quality of the paint will not translate to the computer screen unless it's photographed and you sort of get that shine. But um, a scanned art, scanned artwork that uses metallic paint will just um, end up being like a sort of a flat screen RGB kind of color. Um, but what's beautiful is when you flip through your sketchbooks, if you have these like little bits of shine. So um, for original art and for, you know, that experience of, of, of you know, seeing metallic shine in your in your artwork um, it's it's so nice to play with actual metallic paint um, yeah so i'm just going to switch over to my desk and get started and if anybody has questions um gianna's going to help sort of filter through them and i'm happy to answer as i'm working this is just an hour class so i'm going to try and squeeze as much as i can in um, I have a slew of little objects here. Now, I always talk about working from life, memory, and reference. And today, I'm pretty much going to be working from life and a few reference images, because I forgot to bring a spoon from home. So I just uh, got uh, sort of a basic image of a spoon online, printed that out, and... This is an object that is not actually metallic, but it has a metallic kind of sheen. And it's um, jeans thread that I uh, just actually purchased for another reason. And it kind of glows. And I, I really like that you can use metallic paint in, for accents, even in places where, you know, you, you just want to sort of get that realistic sort of shine and quality to something. And um, yeah, so the palette we're using, I also wanted to show how you can use metallic paint in sort of realistic sort of circumstances, not just for abstract pieces or, or you know, free form kind of work, but um, the palette, the, the metallic, the Derwent metallic paint pan set has blues in it. So I thought that this would be perfect. It also has um, a good variety of two, three gold sort of yellow colors, actually four of them that we can use to do this uh, spool of thread also. So I'll just see how far we get. Um, some of the metallic paints as you play around, I don't know how many of you have the actual Derwent palette that I'm going to be using, or if you're just using your own metallic paints, either way, it's fine. Um, but there is a little bit more of like a shine to some of the colors than others. And the golds are really shiny. So I have a few objects that I'm going to play with that have gold in them. So I'm going to get started. First, what I'm going to do is just start with a basic sketch. And again, those of you who are familiar with my work know that I like to sort of put a bunch of objects on the page at once. So I'm going to see how far I get. We, we do only have an hour, and I want to leave a little time for questions, but I'm just going to get started. Um, oh, are people saying that it's ha that there's an echo? I'm just reading the chat. Is it? Yeah, they're they're saying that there is, but I'm not sure how we can fix that. So Sam, I think what it is is because in your room, there's not a lot um, that is absorbing the echo. Yeah. So 
that's that's really all that it is. There's not much we can do because you are working um, at from home or out of your office. Yeah, I want, I don't want to disrupt my flow, but I can put in my AirPods and quickly see if that is better. So let me just try that. Okay. Okay, let's see. Actually, my AirPods case is metallic. <laughs> so hopefully it hooks up right. Okay, can everybody think it? That'll probably be, that, that sounds great for everyone, I do believe. Agreed. Can you hear me? Yes. Is it still the same? I can't tell if it's going. It sounds through. better without the echo. It does? Okay. Yes. Okay, I'll just keep talking through this way. Okay, is it better for, it's better? Oh, people are saying it's better. Okay, good. All right. It's hard for me to tell because I'm still just talking to myself in my studio. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm just going to get started because I think people are just, they just want to see me work, right? And get going. All right. So I'm going to start with a spoon. I'm just using a 3B pencil. Now the symmetry in a, in a spoon is, you know, it's a little tricky. So this, some of these sketch, sketchy uh, lines I, I like to keep in my work because I just, I like the way that looks. So I, I'll probably keep it without erasing. Um, okay, now, I'm going to try and sketch pretty quickly so that we can get to paint and show how I use the metallic for, for highlights. I just know people like to see the artwork sort of appear from nothing. So I definitely wanted to do the sketch live. And again, I'm working from objects right in front of me. The scale of them is a little random. I've got this little key. And for some, some objects, I mean, you really could go around and trace it. I mean, it's, that's up to you. So working on objects from life is kind of, it's kind of nice because you really can have it right in front of you. Again, it's a rough sketch, and then we'll go in with more de more detail. Now, these I'm using as a, again. I'm using um, somebody saying no sound at all. Is everything? Is it? Can you everybody hear me? Okay. Yep. Yeah? Okay. Good. There's always something, <laughs> there's always some sort of technical issues with these zooms. Okay, so I love drawing uh, anything that's sort of round like this because it really helps me with my ellipses, which is a whole other lesson, but I'm just gonna keep going and you know, not go into too much detail. But what's nice when, you do, when you're drawing something like a spool of thread is you can, you can really sort of echo those ellipses. And so I'm just gonna quickly share what I mean. Um, 
if you get the top sort of down, you know that the bottom is going to be pretty much the same exact ellipse. So you can line up the sides with a simple rule line. And then the bottom is going to really follow that same ellipse. And then, then it's easier to get that shape because you know that it's echoing the ellipse that is happening at the top. And then you can erase. So it's just a little trick. Like if, if you're looking at something like this straight on and you just see a little bit of the top, what's happening at the bottom is actually the same. So you can just sort of get that shape by echoing that same ellipse and then just erasing the back. And then this is gonna be super fun to get, you know, just these lines from the... And what's nice is you know that e all of these little lines of the thread are actually going in the same direction as well. It's just wrapped around and around and around and around. And what I might do just for fun is like have the, even though that's not happening, I'll just pretend that this thread is coming out off the side. All right, I'm gonna get started um, putting some ink down and getting some colored pencil down and showing how we mix the water with the pigment from the colored pencils. And then I can add more. I have space here and here. And again, I, I always like to fill up my pages. So let's see, I'm just going to be using a, for right now, a charcoal gray Derwent Intense Pencil. And this is just to get some of, some of the detail. I'm, I'm not actually gonna use ink yet. I'm just getting some of these highlights. So if you break anything down that has a shine to it into shapes, which is another class that I did with Derwent. We did um, painting glass objects. Sorry, my, my camera's shaking a little. Um, you really, what, what happens when you're painting um, anything with a real high shine is you really, you can see shapes in the reflections. So do you see this shape? It's a, it's a distinct shape. And then here, it fades a little more, but that's also a shape. And then you get, Right here, the um, side of the spoon is very dark, but there's a tiny highlight. And that highlight is what gives it shine and dimension. Same with this handle. So you have the real dark part coming down the side where it's sort of in shadow. And then as the light is shining onto the metal, you see these different shapes. And this comes to a point. So I'll just draw this out. And my, my spoon is sort of not going in the same angle, but that's okay. I can correct that now if I want to. So I'm getting sort of some of those dark lines now, just to get that dimension. I'm gonna add a little, and, and I'm just, I'm really using this image. I could work from memory and just sort of play around with making sort of like random shapes and it'll still look like a spoon. But I think it's helpful to really show you the shapes that I'm seeing when it's a flat image like this. It's a good one to start with. Whereas if I'm holding up this, I haven't drawn this yet. The, the shapes that I see might be different as because my eyes are, are coming from the side, I'm looking at it at a different angle than the camera is showing it from above. So the shapes might be a little bit different. So that's why working from a photograph is nice because we're seeing exactly the same shapes. So I'm just, I'm gonna block in that shape and fill it in with a little bit of pigment. And you'll see when I add water, what will happen with this area of pigment that I'm putting down, laying down on, with, the, with the colored pencil.
So that's a start. That's the first letter. I'm going to work on these sort of simultaneously. The key, again, I'm seeing shapes. They're much smaller, but I'm seeing shapes in this. We do have uh, a sort of a nice shadow. It's kind of dramatic effect from my, the light from my window. So I'll hold it off to the side here. It's a beautiful day in Brooklyn. Um, it's like warm and sort of spring-like. It's a little strange, but I take it. I like it. Again, I'm just working with this one color pencil for now, charcoal gray. And I'm only adding, oops. Minimal details right now where the darkest parts are. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to switch the color pencil I'm using because I'm going from silver to gold. I'm now working on a gold object. And I could work sort of erase some of the, the um, graphite, but I'm going to just work right over it. It might get a little bit um, muddy, but that's sort of how I, how I work. So I, I don't mind that if that bothers other people, I totally understand. Um, and you can, this color is Sicilian yellow, sort of a gold color, because this gold on the pencil is very yellow, sort of an exaggerated gold. So I'm just adding some details and actually I'm gonna work with a burnt orange as well. Okay, now similar colors for the thread. I'm using just for the top. I have golden yellow. It's going to get some color in here. And we can move that around with the water once, once we get to that step. So I'm gonna try and get through this pretty quickly. I'm just doing like sort of stringy like lines for the side here. I'm not sort of defining it too much or filling it in too much because I do wanna have um, the effect that, that it, there's, thread wrapped around. All right, so now I'm gonna to start to add water. I am using a Derwent water brush. I don't know which number this is, but it's one, this one I have not used yet. So I'm just gonna sort of break it in a bit. These, these water brushes are great. So what happens is that pigment that I put down just comes to life. And I, I now remember, I'm actually going right now from memory, but there's that little highlight on the side. So I wanna leave that white of the paper. So I'm just pulling some of this paint around, pigment around that I put down.
and then we'll add metallic in the next step. I'm just doing a little bit of detail. I'm really not filling it all in because I want to use the metallic paint to fill in more of the shape. Sam, we have a question. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sarah is asking if you find that the pigment is too heavy, can you lift some away, perhaps dabbing with a cloth like watercolor? Yeah, you can. Um, you you definitely can. And what what happens though with the intense paints is, and it it does sort of take a little bit of practice, but it dries quickly. So once you add water, it it it's a little less forgiving than, than, um, than watercolor, but I would squeeze more water than less so that you have the opportunity to dab. Um, these, these pencils are amazing. They, they put a lot of pigment down. So that's why I really worked lightly. I didn't fill any areas in. Um, you know, I like to always, when I'm working with ink tents, Pencils or paints, I like to build layers. I've said that like lots of times when I've taught um, classes and sometimes it's even as much as with some of my, when I'm using this, the regular Intense palette, which I use all the time, um, I, um, it, I, I get as many as 10 layers of, of um, putting, you know, pig, pig, pigment. So it's um, just work lightly. Don't go heavy handed. That's the biggest piece of advice um, I can give you. I hope that helps a little. It is, it is a little bit of trial and error though. Sam, another question. Mm -hmm. Sue is asking, are you dabbing the brush on something when you're cleaning? Oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> My very dirty paper towels. I just dab it. I just dab the color off when I'm sort of going between. I'll leave that in the frame so you can see how I use it. It's hard to get everything into the into the frame of. I'm just sort of blending a little because I don't want um, there to be too hard of a stop between the white and the, and I'm just really going around in that same sort of echo of the um, ellipse, the shape, the sort of circular shape of the spool of thread. All right, so that's my first layer for these four objects so far. We're gonna to start to get to the metallic. I just wanted to add a tiny bit of blue here. I forgot. There we go. All right, so now let's dive into these. They're so fun and as soon as you add water, they get like really luscious and fun and the sparkle is, I'm mixing the pale gold and the regular gold just a little bit here, just sort of getting sort of a heavier amount just to go over. And I can hold it up into the light and show you. There are areas that I want to be lighter and definitely this is a good time to take the, your paper towel and dab. The metallic paint, like the shine of it, you, you kind of want to get enough of it down. Hey Sam, there's a request mm -hmm. if you can bring the spoon back into view. 
Oh, sure. Oops, I guess I, I can't cover my, let's see if I, if I put it there, is that good? I want everything in the frame that everybody wants to see. You don't need to see my pencils, but you do want to see the paper towel. <laughs> okay, is that good? Okay, so I added some gold here. I'm gonna pull it into the light. It does take a little bit more cleaning of the brush between the colors because you wanna sort of get all those sparkles out as I switch to blue. And I think I'm gonna use this ice blue. And if you aren't sure how it's gonna go down, it's always nice to use a spare piece or, or, or the other side of your page. I'm just getting a whole area. It's a little bit deeper and darker, which is great because that's actually what's happening in this pool. So I'm going over the middle. There is no white here. It's just a shine of blue. So what I can do now, I'll try with this darker and going back to the colored pencil in a minute. You see how much darker this is? That is building. And I don't know if you can see it, but I can still see my lines under this, which is kind of nice. And I can just sort of add to them again. And let me just see if you can see it. I don't know if you can, but it's shining. I, I don't know if you can see that, but it's such a nice quality. There's like little sparkles in it which is just such a nice surprise when you're like sort of flipping through and looking at your, your pieces. All right, now the spoon is gonna be silver, just straight up silver. We're gonna add a little, it does go down a little dark, see? So you have to um, really water it down. Actually, what I'll do is move this brush that I'm not using and use this area to really water it down. Oh, look at that, I dripped. <laughs> kind of nice when that happens. I actually do that sometimes in my pieces, uh, intentionally. So I'm adding this shine to the whole spoon, aside from maybe like just where those highlights are. There's also graphite, which is a very dark metallic. And I can work with that. Does anybody else have any, any questions as I'm building up these layers and working on this? I'm able, Gianna, if, if there are any questions, I'm able to answer just FYI. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is go back with the colored pencil, pull some of those lines back in.
see if I can pull it, pull it up to so you can see. Can everyone see that? I think there you can see it a little bit better. I am going to erase these lines because I don't need those. I like to leave some of my pencil lines, but in this case, I can take those out. That was just sort of to show the sides. Sam, we have a few questions. Yep. So the first one is from Lorraine and she's asking, how do the graphic pencils work with the metallic paint? The, the intense pencils? Aren't you using a graphic as well? The black oh, one? Yeah, oh, the, oh, just a graphite. How does the graphite pencil? It, it just sits on the page. I mean, I'm not erasing it. That's a, that's a personal choice. Um, here, I'll pull it up to the screen. Can everyone see? That's, that's how I work. I like to keep those lines. It just, I don't know, some people are more precise and they, that would stress them out to have those pencil lines. <laughs> it's a personal choice. But it, it, and I was saying before, it does, it, it's actually showing up a little darker on screen. It does make it a little bit muddy just because there's that dark, you know, the graphite is on the page and you're working on top of it. Um, but if you use it in the shadows, it just sort of builds dimension. So I, I just work with it. Great, and then the second question is from Kara and she's asking, are you using your handmade journal for this project or a different sketchbook? Oh, that's a good question. I'm not using my, I use, I use these often to teach in. Uh, this is just, there's, I did a, a little Zoom with, with a friend recently. This is, this is sort of like my teaching book, but I, I love it. I fill these up and there's, there's so much fun. This is some of the planning for today. Can you see the shine of the gold there? Um, it's a handbook journal. I love these books. The paper is really great. It's not really a hot press paper, but it, it's, it's um, the sort of uh, texture of the paper is pretty, um, pretty flat. And I don't, I don't really like a cold press personally. Um, so I love this. It's a handbook linen journal. I use them all the time. It's, and it's a wonderful size. They make a square, they make a landscape, they make a few different, so that's what I'm using right now. The um, Derwent paper is also great if you wanted to sort of make isolated paintings um, because the paper is like really, you, you know, sort of is designed to work with the paints and the pencils. Okay, so I'm going to use a number two. This is a Derwent fine or line maker. It's just a uh, permanent fine line pen. I had this in the materials list. Um, there's also, these are really great and um, I've been seeing them a lot more recently and Derwent makes them as well. These are gray. So if you don't want such a heavy black line, you can use a gray. Um, and that might be nice to just, I'm just adding an outline just to define the shapes. Again, a personal choice. You do not have to do this. The spool of thread um, is looking fine just the way it is. It's just, uh, this is how I, I like to sort of define my drawings. And I do often go in after I paint, just like I am right now. Sometimes I use the ink right away. Sometimes I use it after. And sometimes I just go back and forth, back and forth. Sam, uh, one more question. Gloria is asking, can you go back and add more layers after the first layer is dried? Yes, 100%. And that's the beauty of these paints. I'm not done. I'm going to keep adding layers. That, that is the beauty of the Derwent 
ink tents and paint series is that it dries flat. You can you can sort of re-wet it. I mean, if you really wanted to, but it it doesn't re-wet the same way as regular watercolor. And that's what's so nice about it is you can just keep building. Oh, I'm seeing somebody, Laureen. Yeah, I can read her question the for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just seeing that it, that we didn't quite answer her question. Yeah. So the graphitant pencil, the Derwent graphitant pencil. Yeah, that's what she's asking. I was trying to figure out exactly what she was saying, but I was curious if Sam had used those metallic paints and if she liked the results, I think was the follow up. Um, I have the Derwent metallic pencils here and the Derwent ink tense pencils. I feel like I'm blanking. I know the graphitant, but I don't, we, I'm not using them. I really just stick with ink tents. So I'm not, do you know what, Gianna, which? Well, which we one? have the graphitant pencils as well. I think she's asking about your, or I believe you're using a 3B, but uh, graph, graphic. Pencil. Oh yeah, I'm just use I'm just using a graphite. It's just a, a 3B, pretty standard, really nice graphite pencil. Mm -hmm. And then and then the plastic eraser. Yeah. Yeah. May have just been a confusion. Yeah. No, I mean if if there, I mean I have like everything of yours, but I just stick with a lot because I like everything to be water soluble. So exactly. if the graphite pencils are not, then I. I'm just not a, I'm not like a straight up uh, colored pencil person. Gotcha. Um, Pecky is asking if you would be sharing how Derwent Intense and Graphite paint sets work together, which I believe you've worked with both of those together before, but. Yeah, I didn't want to bring out the regular palette because I didn't have it in the list and I really wanted to show using the Inktense pencils, how they sort of just all blend right in and can be part of the process. So, I mean, yeah, people who follow me know, like I 90% of the time these days, I'm using just the regular Inktense palette. But, um, what, and what I use, what I love is that if you get one of the special little palettes, like the metallics, or the um, even the graphitant that you that you can um, they all kind of they they all kind of work together. It's just um, and I don't I don't know. Also, maybe you can answer this, Gianna, because a few people said that they didn't see the metallic ink tents, which is what I originally called it. But it is the same pigments, right? It's just got metallic nature. So even though it doesn't say ink tents, it's still the same, right? The metallic paint pan? Yeah. The metallic or, paint or is pan it... is actually not a part of our Inktense line. The Inktense line of paints include set one, set two, which are both 12 uh, paint pans per set. And then we also have mm -hmm. the 24 studio set, which includes 24 paint pans for the Inktense okay. line. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's probably, that's, yeah, I, I sort of just think I use that word freely in yeah <laughs> good for me to know but they do really work together I mean I do know I've used them together the um for example like the the line and wash I'm just adding details as we go I'm going to start to sketch something else um this one this is sort of like a coppery color so I'm going to start to play play with this one because I want to get more drawing done um, and what I'm doing as I'm drawing and you can just sort of watch me is I'm also here just looking at shapes. And this is true for anything that you choose to draw. So I've got these three shapes at the bottom. I'm 
didn't quite make this tall enough. And what I'm seeing here, there was a sample that I shared in my post when I was promoting this class of a chain link fence. And it's the same sort of but what you can do here is just little tiny metallic touches, and especially with the gold because the intense gold is so, um, sorry, not intense, the metallic Derwent paint is so, um, yeah, it's just so, it's so shiny. All right, good enough. That's my first sketch. Not totally accurate, but that's fine. We're under time time strains here. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of pencil down. And what what might because it's so thin, what might actually help here is if I do a little bit of a line in the ink, and then for this one, and I'm just going to use the gray. These are really great if you. You just you don't want to you want to have a, um, a sort of a guide, but um, you don't want to have like a really black line. So what what I'm going to do is add like just a little bit, very little bit, so that I can erase the pencil, and then I can really show you. Hopefully, the light will allow me to um, how you can use the metallic paint to just have little details pop. Okay, I'm gonna erase the pencil. Hopefully I'm waiting long enough. So now you can see, I really just have like a very loose guideline that I'll then add paint to. I had silver in my brush, so I'm just cleaning it off right now. Because you just, you wanna make sure that this is clean. So I'm using the sunset, which is not an exact match, but that's that's fine. I'm filling in spaces again with shapes of the lightest color. There's no white here. The highlights are actually a very, like a copper shine. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is mix a darker color with the metallic paints because we don't have a really good dark sort of brown, which is what I'm seeing. So I'm gonna add a little bit of red and some of this black. which is kind of perfect for It's so quiet. Is any, does anybody else have questions while I'm working? 
Yes, we just got a question. Do the metallic pencils activate with water like the intense pencils do? Which, um, no. Yeah. No, I was going to say, a lot of people were asking in the chat about our metallic pencils. So I sent the link for everybody if you're interested in purchasing them from michaels.com or in store, the metallic pencils are available through Michaels. I haven't used them this time. I just haven't, I haven't pulled them because I'm only using the water, so they're not water soluble. But what, what, what can help in this situation because I'm, I need definition of where the darks are in this piece, particular piece, they would be a good place to, to add them. So there's a lot of shine going on here. There's a lot. I, I, you, I, and it's gonna come together when I sort of add more. Now, the problem is it's not dry. Um, so I might need to wait. But I'm just gonna go for it since we don't have that much time. It's probably best to wait a little longer there. It's not really totally working. Um, yeah, so what, what I'll do is wait a little bit longer. I'm gonna work a little bit more on this. And maybe this, is, this is, might be a good place to show how these colored pencils can work right on top of the paint. These, uh, this one is copper. And I'm using that to get some of the dark. Sam, we have a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is from Anna who joined a little bit late. Are any of the mm -hmm. intense pencils that you're using specific colors or did you just choose those for the project? Um, I'm just choosing them as I go. The, the, here's the set. There's quite a few of them, but these are not water soluble. So I'm adding them at the end for details. Oh, not, not the metallic, sorry, the ink tents. Oh, the, the ink tents. <laughs> oh yeah, I chose them specifically. I like chose a little selection because of what I'm working on. So I have gold, yellows, and then grays and blacks because I knew it was just silver and, um, and gold. So, but there's so many colors in it. And it's really good to do the swatch guide and sort of play around with, you know, experimenting so you know exactly which colors are best for what. And um, I'm not the best at that. I kind of usually wing it, but it's, you know, everyone has their, their own. I'm just adding a little bit of definition to this, this pencil here so that it doesn't just and look then... like. Mm -hmm. Another question was, um, can you give some tips on adding shadows? Yeah, yes, I haven't added those yet. It's hard to do a class in an hour. I do like to show the whole process though, because if I had started, I, it's nice to see something come together from nothing. So I'm, I'm now adding some of those lines. I will, I will do um, a shadow now um for all of the objects but i'm using the metallic pencils to add more lines to the spool of thread can everyone see how it shines a little that do you see that i hope that's coming through and i'm still working on this we just might not depends how the light hits it we just might not i'm just waiting for it to dry Okay, let me see. This is pretty dry. So I'm going, I'm going to quickly just show a few more details added and then I'll, this is gold. This one is antique gold. So I'm going to use this.
it's definitely one of those subtle things working with metallic paints, especially over Zoom. There's only so much you can see, but it's really popping. It's so much fun. There's like just this beautiful quality to it. Does everyone see how that's sort of coming to life now? Looking a little better, a little more real. It's just also sparkling. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some shadows because we all we have just about seven or eight more minutes. Sam, another question came mm -hmm. in, um, and mm -hmm. I'm assuming you're using a medium one or the one from the set. Which water brush mm -hmm. are you using today? Oh yeah. So, are there they're numbered? This is the medium one. Yeah, I think that the or or it's the large chisel tip. Um, but yeah, there's about there's a pack of four that includes um, different a variety of our different ones, but you could also buy them individually as well. Right, this one and and I love the flat tip for when I'm doing like backgrounds. This one's another favorite, and I usually if I have these two going, it's all I it's all I really need because this has a really nice point, so you can get fine detail with it. Okay, so shadows, and this is actually great because I am getting pretty dramatic shadows on my desk. Can everybody see that? So I'm gonna just use the, um, I'm gonna experiment a little here. I'm gonna use the silver mixed with a little bit of the black. Okay, I'll bring that in so you can, oh, here, I'll hold it up because we wanna see those shadows. So I'm using a little bit of this and a little bit of this, and I'm just gonna mix it down here. And I mean, these, these are, these are dramatic shadows that I'm seeing right now, but we can, I always start light. I always start light and then you just keep building. I'm gonna totally make this up because I don't have it in front of me, but it's gonna echo kind of what I did there. So if I just keep going back into it, I can get more dramatic. I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of make this one up too. This is just quick. This one might be the best one to show the show as an example because I just did one line, and then what I'll do is um, show how I get darker as it as I um, get as it gets closer to the object. So just start with a, basically what I'm doing is I'm just starting with a light wash and then you build. And it's a delicate touch. You just have to, you know, sort of play with it. You can blot if you need to. Um, this, I've never done shadows with the, with this um, graphite. So this is an experiment, but it's it's working pretty well. When I'm using the regular Inktense paints, I just use black. Do you see how that works? That kind of helps it pop, just like a darker line right underneath. And the same thing here. I guess this is gonna, that would have a shadow too. I don't really know, I just made that up, but. And then the spoon, I'm gonna to have to make that up too because the spoon sample that I downloaded does, does, does not show a shadow. Anyway, I don't know what it would look like. 
The shadows are fun to play with. You can be really dramatic about it. This could even be, I mean, what I'm seeing in front of me is very dark. Are there any questions as I sort of finish the, the shadows? There was one because, question actually about the shadows. Are you using metallic over the whole image or just in the highlights? Um, I use them in the whole thing. I just sort of started with the with the intense pencils, but um, just because they're they're easy to I mean obviously they're easier to sketch with because it's a pencil, but you know that the pigment can be um, blended with water, so they they'll just sort of blend in, and that's why I chose coordinating colors like this for the gold. Um, and the metallic pencils are not water soluble, so I just wanted to start with these flat colors. But the metallic paints are great for just accents. So in this case, I the whole entire object is metal. It's all shiny. So I did fill the whole area with the metallic paint. Um, I can hold it up to the light again so you can see. I'm just going to do one more, just realizing. my spoon needed a little more definition on that. And then one last comment. Um, there's a lot of messages in the chat saying that they really enjoyed this class and that they really enjoyed learning more about the metallic paints. So thank you, Sam. Oh, good. Yeah, I mean, you know, some people have them just for fun and great, use them for fun. But, you know, it's just nice to see that they can also be incorporated into a more you know, literal, realistic situation like like a metal uh, binder clip. And that's what I that's what I want to show. There's so much you can do. I think next class, I have one more class this year in December, and I think I'm going to do um, something holiday related with metallic and regular and like maybe some like more abstract kind of fun stuff like wrapping paper or cards. So I'm still figuring that out. If anybody has suggestions, please let me know. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna hold it up to the light one more time. I don't, I'm trying to, if you catch the light at the right angle, you can see it. But I'll, all I can tell you is that I'm seeing it. <laughs> They're very shiny. It's it's not showing up so well, especially this is just, gl it's just glimmering in the light. Uh, I'm just trying to hold it in the right angle so you can see. There, can you kind of see it? I hope so. I mean, I'm looking at my screen and I can see it a little, so I hope you're all seeing the same thing. You see how it's shining? The binder clip is definitely shining. Anyway, it's already two, so I'm gonna swing back over here. Um, is there any any last questions? It shows up on my paper too. Great. Great. Is it and yeah, if anybody has questions, please you can always direct message me on Instagram. And if you did anything with me today, share it so we can all see. Um yay, I'm glad everyone liked it. I guess it Gianna, is that it for now? Should we do you want do you did you see any last last questions? No, it looks like everybody is just thanking you in the chat. So thank you again, Sam. And the recording will be sent out from the Michael staff on Monday. But you, on Monday, yeah, because it's Friday, yeah. it takes them just, a day or so. Just as a reminder, it, it will not be sent out. It just will be available on our YouTube channel. So please go back and look on our YouTube channel for the recordings. Uh, at any oh, other, I'll any, send it. Any other uh, Derwent classes? Um, I did have a question on that. So please know that if, as a quick shortcut, if you go to our YouTube channel, you can always just type or go, if you go to YouTube itself, you can always in the search field, put in Michael's classes Derwent. And that will um, kind of uh, narrow your class selections down so that you don't see all of our painting classes at once. So definitely that would be a great shortcut. So, yeah, and I just want to add, um, yeah, no, quickly, I just want to add that I, the last few classes I've done with um, with Michaels and Derwent have been premium classes that were paid. And so I, 
I forgot what I'm all, what I do with the free classes is I always add the link to my stories over a few days. So as soon as I see it go live, you can just check my stories. Um, I will, I will be sharing it there and I'll also share it in my newsletter. So hopefully you're all, or many of you are on my mailing list, but just go to sdonbaker.com and um, you'll find the link to sign up for my mailing list. And I will send the, the, the YouTube link out. So thank you everyone.